G'day, here in the brewery again, of course. This here is what we're going to brew, or what I've already brewed, of course, but what the recipe you're going to see today. And it's a low cal rye brute uh, IPA, the original recipe called it. You know, I think it's more a pale ale. Uh, it's been a love-hate relationship with this beer for me. Now it's been in the keg a while. I mean, the flavour hasn't changed much, but uh, whether I've got used to it or... I don't know, but I've, I've really come to like it. Um, there was a time where I'd have it one day and I loved it and I'd have it the next day and i think, oh, it was a bit earthy or... Uh, yeah, but the idea behind it, it was from a magazine originally. I did change it a little bit. Um, I can't remember how long ago it was in... I was in BYO magazine a long time back. It's been on my to-do list, I'm sure, for several years. I, I, I could be wrong about that. But anyway, it's there. And the idea was, you know, the, low, the trend of low-cal or low-carb beers. And, but brew one with some flavour. Uh, and it uses a special ingredient. I don't usually add much more to my beers than the usual grain, yeast, hops, water. But this uses a, a grain of paradise. It's a, it's a West African herb, if I get that right. Uh, it just adds a little bit more spiciness. Plus, you've got the rye in there, which adds a bit of spiciness. Um, and all that adds up to just a little bit more flavour. Um, I did muck up during this recipe, which you'll see if you watch the whole video and watch the tasting at the end. Um, mine came up a bit high in alcohol, so it sort of destroys that low-cal thing, but it did ferment out to 1.0000. Um, so while there's no residual sugars in there, um, the alcohol came out a lot higher than I wanted. So that kind of messes with the low-cal thing, but it doesn't matter. It turned out a nice beer. It's a great um, thirst quencher. I've really come to like it. So let's stop chatting and we'll just jump into the recipe and I'll see you at the end. So I start with 3.45 kilo of ale malt, which is about 7.6 pound and 570 grams or one and a quarter pound of rye malt. Now make sure you use rye malt. Uh, you don't want to be using raw rye in recipes like this. You can see the size difference in the grains. This is why you'll see me mill them twice like I do with wheat. Um, I put them through once. You can see they're not quite ground up. You can see once they go through again, it's a much finer crush. I'll get a lot more out of them. And I start with 19 litres of water, or 5 gallons. I've got a new profile for Werribee, an updated one. So if you're local to me and you want a copy, you can uh, check it out or ask me if you can't find it in the recipe. But you should be able to see it there in the recipe. Now I add my salts. I went for a, a Brute IPA water profile, of course. Now as far as the strike temperature, the strike temperature was about 68 degrees. And just before I add the grains, which will drop the temp of course, I actually turn it down to 62 degrees. There's a reason I do that. Uh, by the time I've mashed in, it's probably around 65, and that's a nice temperature to get all your enzymes nice and excited. Uh, and after that, I just let it cool down naturally. So all the enzymes are nice and excited at the start. And then as that temperature drops, the enzymes really hop into those longer starch chains and break them right down to a highly fermentable wort. And that's what we want. We want it to be able to ferment out so there's nothing left behind. Or you could just turn it off and let the temperature drop by itself. Uh, by the time it gets, you know, lower than 60 degrees, the mash is going to be done anyway. Maybe, unless you're living in Antarctica. Because I milled the rye very fine, you know, you've got to make sure you get all the dry spots out of it. Uh, I rushed it a little bit and got a few dough balls there, but uh, I worked them all out and all was good. Just while I was waiting for that five minutes before I turned the pump on, just for the bash bed to settle down, I switched over to the flexible uh, return arm. And simply because I have hoses set up for usually your five kilo of grain, and 20 litres of water or something like that. And this, the hose was a little bit short. I didn't want it splashing down into the end. I wanted the end of the hose to be right at the top of the mash bed there. And this flexible hose gives me that 
uh, ability to be able to bend it to whatever height I want. Do be careful, they do get very hot. And you can, you can insulate it if you like to try and keep the heat off it. Or you can just be careful. <laughs> or you can wear a glove or something. I don't think we'll have too much troubles with flow except for that rye. But it's fairly mixed in, but I don't have any rice holes either. So I'll just keep an eye on it. I probably should start a little bit slower than that. But I think we'll be okay. Alright, it's been about 15 minutes, so I can take my pH reading. I have noticed already, with all that extra stirring, we're already down to 62. Uh, look, I'm not too worried. I would have rather it to go a little bit slower, but I'm sure with all that stirring, it's around that 65, everything got activated that I want to get activated. There's really nothing to worry about. Those enzymes know what they are doing. Until there's a bit of fine dust on top, that can become a problem, as in it... Um, I've talked about it before, it can sort of seal off the top if you get a lot of dust on top. It doesn't matter if you're using the top screen or whatever. That fine dust can sit on top and create a layer that's nearly impenetrable. Um, impenetrable. So it's a good idea just to break it up with a mash paddle. If you see your um, levels rising a bit, you can just break it up a little bit. Or give it a stir, top the stir, it's not going to hurt. Just take a little bit for reading. I've got a new water profile, if anyone's you know following my water profiles. But that'll be why, if you do notice that my water numbers have changed just slightly, I've got a new water report. So this is with my new water profile. I was aiming for 5.3, and I've come out at 5.4, and I'm quite happy with that. I'll just make a note of that. So I've just taken the pH reading, that means, well, we're 5 minutes for settle down, 15 minutes before I took the pH reading, 15 minutes for it to cool down in the freezer, so we're halfway through the mash. It's a bit hard to see, but it's looking quite clear. I'm just going to break up that top again. I'm not going to go right down to the bottom. I know I say this all the time. It's probably not needed, but it makes me feel good. So nothing to see here. Everything's going fine. We've got nice flow through the bed. The wort's clearing right up. I'm just going to leave it for another half hour. Keep an eye on it, especially if you've stirred it, because it could back up again. Never, you shouldn't go too far, it doesn't matter what your system is, you shouldn't walk too far away. You never know what's going to go wrong. A small mash bed like this though, you shouldn't have any problems. There really is nothing to see here. Nice and clear, got flow. I haven't even bothered turning it up, I'll just let it go. Mash out. And turn it up to 76 and leave it 20 minutes. Time is up. Nice and clear. Didn't take long to ramp. Less than 10 minutes I give it. I just left it another 10 minutes anyway. Let's pull the basket. So I sparked with 15 litres. I got just over the 30 litre mark. There was still a little bit more coming out of the mash pipe, but I just took it off. 19 litres strike water, 15 litres sparge. Just in case I haven't mentioned this before, while I'm bringing it up to the boil, or even sometimes I don't start till during the boil, because it probably only takes about 15 minutes. But I have my HLT that I'm using at the time set to about well, 85, 90 degrees, enough to sanitize things. And I'm not using my plate chiller today, I'm using the counterflow chiller just because it's here set up. I don't have to mess around. Plate chiller's up there. And so that sanitizes my plate chiller. Of course you want to clean it first, but you know if you give it a really, really good rinse after brew day, there's not much cleaning that's needed. I do put a little bit of restriction on, so that way, hopefully, it's filled the whole internal pipes in there, rather than sort of running around the bottom and leaving an air gap at the top. But yeah, it's simple. Simple. Do 15 minutes of that, and as long as, you know, there's no crud inside it, it's going to be sanitised. Some people might ask why I don't just run star sand through it. Well, that's a pain. How do I run star sand through it? I either have to use gravity or use another pump or fill that up with star sand and then that water's 
no good for me afterwards. See that water I can use for cleaning later. I don't know, makes sense to me. But as we come up to the boil, turn that off. That, even if it had stayed in the boil, would cause nothing. Now that's nothing. Once it was boiling and I knew the wort was mixed well, I took a sample for a reading. Now I got 1.037. I made a mistake here. I looked at my recipe briefly and I saw 1.039, thinking that was the pre-boil, but it wasn't. It was supposed to be the end of boil. Uh, so I thought I was down two points, where really I was up two points. Normally that wouldn't be a problem, but in a beer we're trying to keep low alcohol, it kind of was. A quick look at the grains of paradise. They're related to cardamom and they're much like a pepper. They're very small and they're very hard and it took a bit more uh, grinding than I thought it would have. I'm used to grinding up spices but these were quite hard. That took a little bit longer to crush than expected. <laughs> so we're now going to boil for five minutes longer because I still want these Flavour hops in for 15 minutes, and these in for 15 minutes. So there's 15 grams of Northern Brewer. And if I was using my plate chiller, I'd put these in a bag or something. If I had PVP, I'd use it, I've run out of PVP. All right, so that goes to 15 minutes. So let's just pause that for a second. Because I took so long to grind those grains, I extended the boil for five minutes. I wasn't worried about extending the boil for five minutes because I thought I was a couple of points under. I was really a couple of points over and now I've just extended the boil for five minutes. Which of course is just going to raise my finishing gravity or original gravity. That's it, flame out. Turn off the elements. I'm going to throw in my citra, which is 30 grams of citra. I'm going to put on the whirlpool arm. That's a 10 minute hop stand, so I'm going to whirlpool for about five minutes and then I'll turn it off for five minutes. And just let it sit, settle out. You can see the whirl lock Look, working immediately. It's a, it's a bit hard to see here, and the mic didn't pick it up. But you can see that it wasn't whirlpooling, and there was a strange sound coming out of the pump. And you can hear me click on and off, and I twigged that because I'd turned on the whirlpool arm too early it had sucked air into the pump and that'll stop your pump. It's really, really bad for your pump. So you never have your pump on while you're boiling. I know some people try to like to do that and it makes absolutely no sense to me. It's bad for your pump. If you could hear that noise before, that was air in the pump and that's really bad for the pump. And the reason that happened is I turned this on too early. I should have waited for the wort to stop bubbling and now I've turned it on and off, it's working fine. Never have the pump going when you're boiling. I see people try and do it, um, and they get in all sorts of trouble. You just, you don't do it. These pumps do not like air or cavitation, and that can happen, believe it or not, when you're boiling. Now I turn it back on and off and got rid of that cavitation in the pump, everything's working fine. I just rushed it a bit. And it can also cause you know, the hot blockages in your pump. It shouldn't, because the hop shouldn't get down below that bottom plate. But if you're boiling and you're turning pumps on, you've got all this stuff going on in Whirlpool, it'll mess things up. That's the five minutes up for the Whirlpool. I'm going to turn off the pump. So now the chiller's sanitised, I'll just unhook it and move it over. I'm going to have to get rid of this. And I'm ready to go once I hook up the hoses. There we are there, hooked up my hoses. I'm going to go straight into the wort 
at first, chill it all down a bit, and then I'll go into my fermenter. So now I've got it running. It's a bit hard to see here, but it comes out from the bottom of the Brusilla through the chiller and back into here just to chill it all down in here first before I put it in the fermenter simply uh, to stop that bittering it's a very light beer these brutes very low final gravity a low finishing gravity and a high bitterness doesn't sit well together it's all out of balance just in that short time it took me to arrange things it's reading 78 down the bottom of there so we're quite cool in there already there's no more bittering going on so now I can just switch it over slow, slow the flow down a little bit and go straight in the fermenter right, smells good Right, that's the end. I can see we're pulling junk. I'm going to stop it. I was going to open my brick of USO5 and split it up and use that, but I haven't got the time today, so I think I'm just going to go with Nottingham. You want a nice high attenuating yeast. Nottingham's pretty good. USO5, WLPR1, something like that. I was going to use Verdant, but Verdant can stop high, although I think probably in this it would be okay. Medium to high Verdant is. And here's my enzymes. This is mainly for, as you can see, this one's for distillers, but it will do. It's, a, it's the right enzyme. This is 11 or 12 grams. You probably only need about half of that. But this was in the mail during that sort of mini heat wave we had for about a week from Sydney. I don't know why it took so long. So I'm a little bit worried about that it's even going to work. So I'm just going to use the whole packet. You can add some of that to the mash too if you like. I'm just adding it to the ferment. You can add it either or, or both if you really wanted to. One packet of knot is usually fine because it is under 5% beer. But because I do videos, I take insurance. So I want this beer to work. <laughs> so I'm using both. So in the end I was three points up. That's not real good when you're trying to keep the alcohol low. Yes, I could have watered it down, but I just kept going and didn't worry about it. You'll see in the end that I'm way more alcoholic than I should have been. Uh, and that comes from my finishing gravity. The fellas who wrote the recipe expected it to finish at about 0 .004. And uh, I did better than that. I got down to that 0 .000. So that just added to my alcohol. Excuse the fridge noise. But this is Saturday afternoon and it looks like it's just about done fermenting. I'm not even going to take a reading. That's like 48 hours. Did I just say like 48 hours? I did look and even there you can see I've even missed my dry hop window and look the yeast is all falling out of suspension. Well that's what you get with Naughty and two packs of Naughty at um, uh, for some reason the, the temperature set at 18.7 so there you go i am just going to dry hop 100 grams of nelson sav uh, which is that whole packet but uh, we're only under a little bit under pressure so let the pressure out a bit not all of it and then as you start turning this if i can do it one-handed i had to just lose it off two-handed if you start turning this if, you, if it's too tight to turn you probably haven't let enough gas out but I can feel that lid is being pushed up by the gas, natural gas. I don't have to, natural gas, natural CO2. I don't have to, um, uh, there we go. So there's no putting the bottle on, there's no prying. That lid's ready to dry hop. So um, I'll do this and we'll see how it turns out in a few days. I don't purge. I never purge um, for the reason being the crowd was built up. That meant CO2 coming out. And it will push up and push hopefully any oxygen out 
but I've said it before, if I go to purge, I'll be forcing CO2 down there unless I go really, really gentle, which is probably a waste. Waste, but uh, I'd push away the Krausen from the top and I'd be stirring all that oxygen up and probably causing more damage than just leaving it. So I'm just going to leave it. And as you can see here in a second, we are at 1.000000 and it's done. This is the Tuesday. So it was brewed Thursday, dry hopped Saturday, and by the next Tuesday, by the Tuesday, it's done. There's no point leaving it any longer and I'm cold crushing for a couple of days and I'll kick it. Cheers. Cheers. This is the beer. It is a little bit hazy. Uh, it's got all that rye in it. I'm, I'm, I'm undecided. I've got to tell you, I'm undecided. People know me. I don't throw many things in beers besides hops, grain, um, you know, the usual stuff, yeast. Because I don't think you need to for a lot of beers. Now, of course, this uh, was taken from somebody else's recipe. Um, I did change it a touch, not very much, uh, different hop here and there, but it actually smells okay. Uh, I don't know where that 100 grams of Nelson Sav went, because it seems to have, I don't know, it just, I think the, the grains of paradise and rye have sort of taken over. It's really nice to drink, as in it's very dry. Um, as, as it should be at 1.0000. But it's quite nice to drink. It's a real summer drink. There's some days I pick it up and I go, oh, I love it. And there's other days I go, oh, it's, uh, it gets a bit earthy. Uh, and, and, you know, when you're adding something that looks like pepper and that, and, you, and you've got that rye in there and you've used Nelson Sav, you've got to expect that, uh, that peppery... Uh, earthy thing going on and it's got that in, in spades now this is going to be a very short um, video because I've got to get the whirlpool going in a minute now very short review today I'm loving it I had one last night probably depends on what you eat of course and stuff and it was I was getting that earthy thing again it was a bit too much a bit too uh, it's that pepper cross, uh, is it cardamom that it's related to? Or oh, one of those herbs. Um, uh, but I don't know. Like it's, it's, it's why it's taken me so long to do a review of it. And I've undecided whether I've got to upload the video. Because if beers are bad, I don't upload the videos. And it's not, it, it, it's because it saves me time. It takes me a, a day or sometimes two days to edit a video. You know, and that's just the one video, and then you've got to go back and edit the review. Hopefully I'll do this in one pass, and I won't have to edit this review. But that's why the bad videos don't get uploaded, because I, I'm not spending two days, three days working on the video for a bad video, you know, for a, a beer that I didn't like. It's that simple. So it's a weird aroma. But it's very interesting. Um, some people would love it, some people might not. Um, I don't know where to put it. Today, I'm loving it. There goes the alarm. That actually means I've got to get my yeast nutrient in. So I'm going to go. Um, I'll leave this one up to you with your brewer. I'm not going to tell you to. And I'm not going to tell you not to. Uh, I can say that even without that, I still think it would be a great beer without the grains of paradise. It's got that spiciness from the rye. It's just, it's a summer beer. Mine came out a little bit higher in alcohol. I think that... Um, at first it was sort of giving, I could notice it, but now it's sort of settled down after a few weeks. It's, it's not such a problem. But the one thing that does is that defeats the purpose of a low carb beer when it comes out high. It was supposed to be 4.3%, it came out like 5.5% because it fermented right out. So in a way, it's defeated the low cal or low carb or whatever you want to call it. Um, while it's, there's no residual sugars at all left in the wort, there's too much booze there. Um, you'd, you'd want to brew it at like 4% or something, or 4.3, I think the original recipe said. And that would have made it like 125, whatever it is, calories or whatever it is, for, for, one, whole, for one whole beer. But anyway, that's it. I'll leave this up to you. Uh, like, subscribe, share. Thanks to my patrons. 
Um, today, I'm really, really enjoying it. It's really nice sitting here in the sun in the hot brewery. Uh, other days, I've had it and gone, hmm, it's a bit too earthy and a bit too spicy for me. Um, but it's an interesting brew. And I will be brewing another brute like this. Um, whether I use the Grains of Paradise again, I don't know. Um, it's very interesting though. Thank you. Cheers. Goodbye. Happy New Year.